Welcome to the Nutritious and Delicious podcast with me, Bethany. Our mission is to support you as a busy parent with your nutrition and well being. After all, at Nutritious and Delicious, we believe a healthy family starts with a healthy parent. So I'm excited I have Louise here with me today. Louise is actually a professional certified coach, an NLP practitioner, intuitive eating counselor, and trauma informed domestic abuse specialist. So, welcome, Louise. Hello, Bethany. To be here again yeah i love it we've had you on the show um it'll be last year now so i'm excited because we've talked about this topic before and i've noticed it comes up a lot especially with um, my type of clients and i think this would be something to talk on because i think this is a it's a tough topic for people so we're actually talking today about emotional eating and neutralizing food so Kind of give us a bit of a background first, professionally and um, personally, kind of like how you got started in this space and what led you to do what you do today. Okay, so I think my first issues around food was when I was a young gymnast. I was gymnast, I think my first issues around body image was about eight years old where we used to get weighed and I was quite a chunky gymnast. So although I wasn't fat, I thought I was what I was fat because I was like full of muscle and I was probably heavy, well, I could have been heavier than some of the other girls who maybe were a bit older. So having these early memories of having food issues and then coming into a teenager when I gave up gymnastics, I gained lots of weight and, you know, food was, I don't know, we've always had food around the house. We've like, you know, we've um, always had, um, sorry, emotional, emotional, Tied to food, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just lots of family coming in and um, talking about uh, giving you food for comfort, giving you food as rewards, and then going into coming quite quite big. And then I had an eating disorder for quite a few years, and so I'd say binge eating and um, then taking laxatives, you know, abusing my body, and then coming into coaching, I started doing a lot of weight loss coaching and I found that it just, yeah, trying to get people to listen and lose weight and I just found that there must be another way, there must be another way and then I yeah. discovered intuitive eating and it's it's just been gone, it's just gone on from there. So, and now I do a lot of domestic abuse work as well. There's lots of women who have had um, other people tell them what they should be doing with their bodies or you look fat in that or you shouldn't be eating that you shouldn't be doing that so being teaching people to come back into tune with their their own body and their own needs um it's quite difficult but yeah we're working through it what a journey for you especially having gone through that yourself so you kind of have the understanding of you know what people are going through just hearing you talking about being a young kid and like weigh-ins it reminds me of like going into like slimming world or weight watchers or something and getting on the scale and it's just you're you're compared to this number and i think that's where i think especially a lot of women i've noticed are very hung up on um the number um and you know men struggle with emotional eating too it, it doesn't really pick a it you know doesn't pick a gender unfortunately so it's it's quite prevalent across both i think just um in general women usually come forward more to talk about the emotional side of eating i find um, personally in what i do um when you talked about sort of intuitive eating maybe explain to people what is intuitive eating because i think some people aren't aware of what that actually is yeah it's about kind of getting back in tune with what your body wants or what your body needs you know when we're born we're all born knowing intuitively when we're hungry and we cry for food and then our mum feed or our, our caregiver feeds us and then once we've had enough we kind of turn our face away from the bottle and or breast and and then we're satisfied and as we are a child and we kind of then get like I was saying before with my family you're rewarded with food food becomes like a family event food becomes a comfort food becomes a reward food becomes a punishment or whatever you know whatever that is or oh, you can't eat that you can only get ice cream if you're good and mm -hmm. you know you have all these different things around food so intuitive eating is just becoming back in tune with your own natural ability to decide if you are hungry if you are full what foods make you feel good what foods don't make you feel good you know not listening to diet mentality and what you should and shouldn't be eating it's just if we were if we had that ability to really listen to our body which is a thing that we've become unattuned to because of society mm -hmm. and what's around us and what, you know, the products on the shelves are making us, you know, like desire certain foods because of their great 
perfect crunch. You know, I don't know if you read the um, the Pringles advert. Once you pop, you can't stop. And you know, it's made in a factory, isn't it? It's not made by a chef. Yeah. It? It's kind of the, all this stuff that's going on in our brains. But intuitive eating is really becoming back in tune with your own natural ability to decide what it is that you need, when you need to eat, how much you need to eat, what your what nutrition your nutri nutrients your body needs in that moment to satisfy you but also you know making sure that you know like you what we're talking about today is the neutralizing food and just not having good foods and bad foods you know it's just yeah. there's nutritious food that makes us feel good and then there's play food that we can have and in moderation because it it's listening to your body and how that body makes you, how that food makes you, your body feel what's interesting is um a lot of people aren't really aware of this but kids are pro the prime example of intuitive eaters because they typically will go for food um usually a lot of parents come to me asking like well my kids won't eat vegetables they won't eat certain things but if they've actually done studies and i think it was on kindergarten children and if they put them in a room they put out a whole bunch of like sweets and cookies and chips and everything um, in England, it's, um, well, yeah, in England, it's chips and over here, it's fries, I guess I have to remember that. Um, but they put about a whole bunch of stuff and then they also put out vegetables and fruit. And then they actually, what they noticed in the study was that yes, the children went for like sugar and everything, but they also went for the good, healthy food too, because the body will naturally tell you like if it's lacking vitamins and you will actually start to crave, um, healthier food if you're constantly eating a lot of bad food. So it's the way the body's sort of like understanding it, it needs it needs different nutrients and, and unfortunately in today's society we are very stripped of the food um, that we have a lot of its box processed food it's um, very much man-made you talked about the pringles once you pop you can't stop well over here there's lays and it's i bet you just can't eat one <laughs> because it's there you know you find that bliss point and the, they are scientists to to make sure that like once you start eating them you can't put them away so this is why you know people don't realize like junk food is addictive because they've made it that way because they've, it, it's been made in the lab and they have a specific um, setup of, of what it tastes like, you know? So, and they do studies on it and they get people to eat it and, you know, test it and everything. So they want you to become addicted to their products so you continue buying it. And, you know, who would want to buy broccoli and apples and, and normal nutrient dense food when something else tastes amazing. But again, your body starts to lack those nutrients. And this is where you've got people coming in with like gut inflammation and, um, you know, the feeling like lack of energy. I hear that a lot is especially um, with women and stuff is they're living off basically food out of a box and they're lacking so much energy because they're not getting it throughout their day. So I love how talking about neutralizing food because um, having worked in the diet industry myself, when you deem a food is bad or negative um, or it's a punishment or reward, this is where it, it's emotionally charged, right? The food is emotionally charged itself. Um, so what have you noticed in your industry in the last several years, especially going through the pandemic and everything? What have you seen? Well, I just think, um, I, th I think things are changing. I do think that, you know, more people, I don't know, maybe because I'm more in tune with this kind of world that I'm seeing more people in tune with this kind of world, but it's still very much like you're, you have to have a certain body. You have, you are only sexy if you have a slim body. You are only desirable. You can only be successful. And you know, us women, if we feel fat in a certain outfit that we then are more worried about what we look like if we're standing in front of a group of people tell, giving a speech or something amazing we're, we're too busy thinking oh so i look fat in this or i think that about my body and i think you know that whole diet industry that is so focused in on how we look and how we should look you know especially during the pandemic everyone you know the covid19 pounds you know i'd heard it being called it's like everyone's like oh God, so much weight i've not been able to lose that ever since the pandemic but but like I said, I'm hope I'm hopeful that things are changing. I think there's a lot of yeah. positive advocates out there now that are talking about, you know, the fact that sizes, you know, the health for every size movement is a fantastic movement about, you know, I know I speak with my clients a lot about your goal is like their goal to be healthy rather than skinny, you know. Right. So yeah. Yeah, it's I think it's a great goal to focus on the health of your body because you can be really thin and have tons of things wrong with you 
um, you know, looking at things like people's blood work or like the results they get back from like a, um, an inflammation test and things like that. And they can have more than somebody that's actually overweight and maybe eating a lot of nutrient dense food, but maybe just too much of it basically for their, for their um, body. Right. But I would rather somebody focus on that healthy side of it. How did you, when you kind of started to go through the process for yourself, how did you handle when you had cravings and like, what did you sort of do for yourself to, to navigate away from, um, like you said before, the binge eating and things like that? Like, that's what a lot of people I think struggle with is they tell themselves in their head, like, I can't eat that. It's not healthy for me. And then they'll overeat it anyways. Right. So how did you sort of navigate that for yourself? Well, I think what happened, what can happen is you, when you restrict a certain food group or tell yourself that a food is bad or you can't have it and you can go right let's be good I've been good all week then you know in, in my kind of opinion every kind of real restriction or diet always follows a binge you know if you kind of say right I'm not having any carbohydrates like I've quite yeah. often gone onto the old keto diet and that's it no carbohydrates then we'll have an evening out it's a bowl of bread in front of us a glass of wine and next thing you know I've eaten half of the bread got all the garlic bread all the pizza and I've made up for the whole two weeks I've not eaten anything <laughs> any yes. carbohydrates and I've just had my whole of... because the body's clever the body's like I need some carbohydrates let me just seek it out and it will just drive you crazy yeah. until you actually have it so I think by going through the, the intuitive eating kind of the, the way that we talk about things from the 10 principles and stuff like that and I have I, I neutralize food I try and eat food that makes me feel good bread doesn't genuinely make me feel good in my stomach in my but I like it but I don't mm -hmm. think bread really likes me so you know <laughs> but just making sure that I'm eating the foods and not giving them a label of I'm not allowed, I don't eat bread, I don't yeah. eat sugar, I don't eat, but you know, noticing what does make me feel good. And it's about just really listening to my body and what makes me feel good and what doesn't make me feel good. And sometimes I do things that don't make me feel good and I pay the consequence or I just go, okay, well, that's fine because I, it was nice when I was having it and I enjoyed it. So, you know, but just, preparing as well if you know that you can have a nice meal out of the weekends you know and just yeah i think yeah that's that's a good uh, good way of looking at it kind of tuning into your body more so because i find a lot of people there's there's a, a lot of dairy and, and wheat intolerance um and usually you'll hear that within a consultation when i'm speaking with clients and they'll talk about like their gut pain um acne breakouts or things like that so they're reacting to some types of food but typically you crave what you're actually um sensitive to so this is why a lot of people they overeat like dairy or they overeat like wheat products and the problem is when today's society it's in a lot of our food so like we are more reliant on boxed meals um freezer kind of things that go into the oven and a lot of them already have milk ingredients um and also wheat ingredients and within those um ingredients modified milk ingredients are made scientifically in a lab so they're not even proper milk um, and then wheat ingredients, it's very genetically modified, unfortunately, when it goes into it. So this is what we're reacting to is a very downgraded version of milk or um, wheat in general. So I think because it's kind of mismatched into the food so much into the chain, I think a lot of people aren't aware of A, what they're having intolerances to and, and feeling that way. And like, I'm not really sure what it is to point it out. So this is where um, I kind of just say to people, like maybe just try eating a little bit of it and seeing like on its own bread, how does your stomach react? I think a lot of people, they get really bloated. Um, they don't feel good after, or they can eat a certain amount, maybe one slice versus two. Like everyone's a little bit different. Same with milk products. Um, some people can get away with certain types of hard cheese, but yet they can eat yogurt or drink milk straight. Like it's just a little bit different for each person. So it's kind of finding that bit of a balance for each person. And you're right, taking that label off it being a good food, bad food, um, and just having that, like everything is allowed because then I think it takes away the power and the control. And I think a lot of the times when people are in those states of um, feeling the urge to binge um, and feeling that urge to sort of like, if you haven't had carbs like all week and you've been really restrictive, um, it's almost like a, a way to sort of gain control, right? So I think when people do that, it's a way to sort of feel like they have control over their own body, especially when um, I've noticed in the diet industry, that was a big thing because again, you've got people telling you how to eat and then it's like, no, you won't. Like, I'm going to do this myself. And then they've gained like five, the five pounds basically over the weekend 
just from um like you said like the the bread and the wine and everything and they're like but it didn't seem like that much food at the time um but it's just water weight a lot of the time people don't realize it's just it's that your body hasn't had say carbohydrates and then you've shocked it into now um it's having to process all these carbohydrates which it wasn't used to for about a week or two right so um what are three to four kind of solutions to help clients with this problem and and how do you sort of work with clients and helping them sort of step away from that that um f either fear of losing control um or trying to gain that control and and helping them sort of look intuitively at at food instead yeah i mean i, th I suppose sort of going back to sort of real emotional eating i think sometimes I mean, there's a few, there's a few things that we can, we can talk about here. There's making sure, first of all, a lot of people feel like they're emotional eating or binge eating. A, because they have restricted something and all of a sudden they're craving it or their body's craving it. Or like we were talking about before, your body's clever. It knows what it needs. Yeah. And, um, it could be that it needs some sugar or it needs some energy, but it's going to go for Haribo instead of, you know, some fruit or, you know, so, cause that's what's available. But I'd also say, are you getting the basics? Are you getting self care? Cause I think if you're not taking care of your, I know we, we spoke about this in a whole separate podcast, but this is like, I'm like self care is non-negotiable. I think yeah. a lot of the time when people are binging, eating the wrong foods or eating bad foods or mm -hmm. good foods or, you know, whatever it is, sometimes people say I'm being good cause they're doing lots of self care and I'm being bad because now I'm not doing so much self care. And if you're, looking at your values and what you value and what your what your self-care ritual is and if you're on it with your self-care eating nutritious food and are you getting enough sleep are you getting enough movement are you you know getting enough uh, what's the relationships like in your life it's about the whole package and a lot of people go to food as a comfort for like for me my, my husband went was working away we moved to a different area I didn't have any friends around here I just had my children and my husband was back where we used to live working as a fireman a few days a week so I was on my own and food was my best friend yeah. it, was like, it was my comfort it was my go-to and at that time for me it was information obviously I was doing what I do now and I was like right I know what I'm doing like, I'm totally aware that I'm reaching for comfort like I need my best friend to sit and eat some crisps with me while I'm while I'm, um, you know, me and, me and my best friend crisps rather are, yes. are sitting here while the kids are in bed. I've got a glass of wine and some crisps and I'm yeah. good. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I've got all the friends and family around me that I need. And yeah, yeah I gained some weight. And then I had that anxiety around, I live by the beach, I've now gained some weight. And I had the consequence of using that food. So to me, that was information. Like there was something there that needed to be addressed. And I think when we recognize the in the emotional eating as, a, as, a, as, a, as information, it's like, what am I, what do I need here? Obviously I'm going to food because I'm numbing something. Do I need to, to hire somebody to go through all this stuff with? Well, I hire, you know, a coach and she's feeding cats or a nutritionist, or do I need to, is it trauma that I'm trying to hide from? Do I, I don't want to face up to? Do I need to hire a therapist? But recognizing that, and if you're really doing the self care and doing the work, doing the journaling, thinking about what is the issue, it can then make the food is the information. It's like the last resort of, this is the destructive pattern that I'm following. Yeah. There must be something. What's the underlying issue here? And I think recognizing that is key to, to kind of getting on top of it, maybe. Yeah, that's interesting. Emotions have a, a lot to do with it. And it's interesting because I find a lot of people will say to me, I'm fine during the day. Like I'll follow something really good and I'll eat really healthy. And then it just comes to the evening. It goes out the window. And what I've noticed is a lot of people, when you are alone, like you said, you're with your thoughts and those thoughts could be trauma related. Those thoughts could be, I need a friend in the moment. Um, they could, you know, you could be feeling lonely and it could be, it could be relationships in your life. It, it could be various different things. It could be childhood stuff that's coming up. And I find a lot of people, this is where they, they like to tune out. And this is where like the TV comes in and you kind of just have your brain on sort of that like autopilot. And there's, I think that's doing that. Sometimes it's, it's a lack of checking in with what's going on in your head. Um, I find even sometimes I like to drive without having the radio on because I find it, even if it's just noise and sometimes I like listening to music, but some of the times I just like to have it where it's silent and it's almost like I force myself to actually listen to my brain. So to listen to what's going on, because usually our brains are always on they're always talking to us um and sometimes just checking in and this is where like the probably the biggest ideas come to my head 
or something comes up and I'm like, I need to check in with this. And I think this is where a lot of people, instead of doing that, they turn the TV on or they play video games um, or they do something that's kind of mindless, right? Because they kind of want to zone out, check out. And with that usually comes eating because that's usually when we're in front of the TV, we're in front of the computer. So we're kind of trying to turn our brain off. It's trying to tell us something. And then we're sort of like kind of giving it that um, feeling of comfort. So we're, we're and, and I think a lot of people are unaware of that. And I just honestly ask people just to sometimes give themselves some silence and step out of it. And it is uncomfortable because you're kind of left there thinking about like, you know, maybe past memories or worrying about the future. If you have anxiety, it's usually forward focused thinking. Depression is usually your backwards sort of thinking about something that's happened, right? So kind of checking in with that. Um, it's an amazing topic. Um, is there anything else that you can tell our guest today, Louise? Yeah, and I, I think as well, obviously, sometimes when you talk about going into the evening, a lot of people say, I've been, you know, I've eaten so healthy all day. I've been really good, good, quote, you know, good, good food, yeah. bad food. I've been really good all day. And then I've just wanted to binge in the evening. And I find myself, and I, I kind of get this myself because, you know, it's like you're, you're a busy mom or, you know, you're busy working, you're doing this. I drop the kids off, I do that. I quickly grab something to eat. I'm then doing my work. I'm then grabbing something else for lunch. And then I'm picking the kids up and then I'm doing their dinners and doing their after school stuff. And I just can't be bothered to make myself a whole dinner. And yeah. I just have something quick to eat. And then by the evening, I'm dinner hungry. Yeah. I haven't eaten a meal because I've not stopped. It's been, what can I get that's quick, that's healthy, that's quick, that's... and then maybe my body isn't getting everything that it needs because I'm trying to be healthy and yeah. I'm trying to be a mum, I'm trying to be super person, super business person, you're trying to do all the things. And then actually I, I, haven't, I haven't sat down to a meal because I can't yeah. be bothered to cook all the vegetables and then put the protein and then put the fats and then get it or then even think about it. I'm just like, if they've been, if they've eaten, everyone's good and I'm like my self-care is to the bottom of the pile and I'm not looking up out for myself so then I'll go for the oh just have some crisps as I deserve them. and then sometimes I would also say if you have been eating really well and you know like you've, you've you have been eating nutritionally and you've had all the, the things there is something going on for you that's quite stressful that's quite you know what this is a really hard thing that I'm having to deal with. be mindful and I'm going to eat this chocolate and I'm going to savor it I'm going to eat it slowly I'm going to be mindful with it and that is my self-care that's okay, but it's when it's every night, sitting in front of the telly, yeah. eating the crisps, numbing the feelings, numbing the pain, as long as you're recognizing that this is what I'm doing for myself. I mean, with the domestic abuse courses that I do, every single week we say, what are you doing this week for self-care? And some of the women's like, do you know what? I'm gonna cook myself a nice meal. Some of the women, it's just, I'm going to wash my face. You yeah. know, it's just like, some of these things are really basic and simple. And there was something that actually came up for me last week, and I've got to say, it was someone said this, so I said, girl, wash your face. <laughs> this yeah. is like, I say this to myself now. Ever since I heard that last week, every morning, I'm like, girl, wash your face. Every morning, girl, wash your face. Every night, yeah. girl, wash your face. Because it's one of these things that we could just go and wash your face, brush your teeth, do some self-care, and then yeah. go sit on the TV. And then you might not feel like eating the food because you've nurtured yourself in a nicer way. I don't think a lot of, especially moms in general, um, being moms ourselves, we obviously know this, um, part of the self-care is looking after yourself and what I challenge a lot of moms in terms of when they do say um, I don't you know usually make myself something and I get it grabbing stuff on the go it's easier just to kind of get the kids sorted out but I usually ask okay so did your kids get a nutritious dinner and usually they say yes so it's like <laughs> then why didn't you give yourself any of that so I find a lot of women will kind of just say oh I'll sort myself out later but then you're actually making double you're almost doing like another different dinner. So we'll always make sure our kids are eating healthy. They've got a proper sandwich or dinner, even if it's something quick, usually you're trying to put some kind of vegetables or fruit or something nutritious protein on the, on their food. But a lot of the times we don't treat ourselves as if we are that second, third, fourth child, and we kind of put ourselves to the side. So that's the place that I usually say to um, women is like, even if you're not going to have it then and there with them, say if they eat dinner a little bit earlier than you and you want to eat dinner later with your partner or something, I usually say like, try and put something aside that you've already made for them. Um, and that's kind of been a habit I put myself in as well, because it's, it's easy to kind of get into that pattern of let's just get the kids sorted out um, and then wash in bed, get them 
you know, in their pajamas ready for bedtime and you're kind of just rushing around for them. And then in the background, your stomach's growling and then you're like, okay, now I have to wait. And you go to the cupboard and you're looking for crisps and chocolates and stuff because you're so hungry. And that's also the other reason why you never go shopping, like grocery shopping when you're hungry. Because you will just buy absolutely everything and anything. And you'll probably be scoffing on basically a, a loaf of bread getting back in the car because you're so hungry, right? So that's um, a couple of tips just for those mums out there, definitely for sure. So, Another tip on top of that, I would say don't take your hungry children shopping with you. Yeah, people. that's even worse. <laughs> that's even worse. Come back, we'll just snack food, no meals. What's happened here? Exactly. And they're also pretty grumpy as well. So it's, yeah. I, and it's interesting because a lot of mums, like myself included, we're always good about bringing snacks for the kids, making sure that they have something. And we're always thinking about that, like, because we never want them to go hungry, so we know, because we know the consequences, right? But as it's different so that's usually where I say to mums and stuff definitely if like you are running around a lot and you're not putting yourself first start with simple things like just bring a couple of things that you can bring in the car like a banana maybe a couple of um like crackers or uh the trail mix or something like that that has some type of fat or um some heftiness to it at least that way you have something because I've been caught out before with in traffic and um, picking up the kids or doing things and I'm like I'm so hungry and I bring a protein shake with me as well so I can drink that while I'm driving obviously and then have my nuts and seeds and like an apple or a banana and then I'm filled up usually and then I'm not going towards like having to go through drive throughs and things like that. Yeah, it's hangry is a real thing isn't it? Oh it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like being hungry. hungry or hangry. Yeah <laughs> well that was great thank you so much for coming on today Louise how can um, our clients find you? Well, I'm on Instagram. I have two Instagram pages. One's at Louise Bryant Coach, and the other is at the Secrets in the, sorry at the Secrets in the Powder Room. That's my podcast, and you can find the podcast as well on all of the podcast um, platforms, and also Louise Bryant Coach. Wonderful. Thank I you. will put that in the show notes for everybody. So thank you so much for coming on today, Louise. Thank you very much for having me.